Uh, good, good morning, Ahmed. Good morning. Uh, first, uh, we begin with the Al Ahram newspaper. President Mohammed Morsi confirmed his full respect to both the Constitution and law, along with the, his appreciation to the judicial authority and Egypt's respectful judges. Morsi also stressed upon his abidance to verdicts made by the Egyptian judiciary and his utmost care to manage relations between state authorities and to avoid any confrontations between them. Also, a presidential statement issued yesterday before the president's departure to Saudi Arabia on his first external official visit referred to the decree number 11 for the year 2012 regarding the reconvention of the People's Assembly sessions as an initiative to respect judicial verdicts with special concern to the verdict made by the Supreme Constitutional Court. The statement added that the decree also included a call for early elections 60 days following the finalization of a new constitution, which is another step towards implementing the verdict in the most appropriate timing. It also stressed that the resumption of the People's Assembly, Assembly sessions targeted the presence of a legislative body. So we will have this report and we'll be right back with Mr. Said Gubayir to talk more about this topic. The office of President Mohamed Morsi announced that the president will respect a court ruling overturning his decree for the dissolved Islamist-dominated parliament to convene. The statement issued on Wednesday appears aimed at mollifying an infuriated judiciary which has been placed at the forefront of the complex struggle between powerful generals adjusting to their new Islamist president. Last week, Morsi ordered Parliament to convene in defiance of a military decision to disband the House in line with a court ruling last month before the generals handed power to the President. Morsi's decree was applauded by supporters who believe the court's decision to disband Parliament was political, but it set off a firestorm of criticism from opponents who accused him of overstepping his authority. According to the country's interim constitution drafted by the military generals who took charge after President Hosni Mubarak's overthrow early last year, the military assumed the dissolved parliament's powers. Morsi's decision was seen as an opening shot in a power struggle between Egypt's first civilian leader and the Mubarak-appointed generals who wanted to return broad powers even after they transferred control on June the 30th. On Sunday, Morsi had ordered parliament back and invited it to convene. Taking its cue from the President, the People's Assembly met on Tuesday. According to Morsi's decree, new parliamentary elections are to be held after a constituent assembly picked by the legislator finishes a constitution. While the assembly's fate is in doubt, with the administrative court deciding on Wednesday to look into complaints on the panel's legality next Tuesday rather than September, as had been scheduled according to official MENA news agency. Welcome back. We're still with Mr. Said Gubayil, who will talk to us more about this uh, piece of news that we just saw. The President Morsi confirmed his full respect to both the Constitution and law. So, do you think that uh, there are future or more disputes on the horizon? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely a lot. Actually, we need to understand why he has made that step, which he decided to, uh, to consider null and void, mm -hmm. to understand the future later. So far, the president issued 11 decrees. Mm -hmm. The first nine ones were tokens of good intentions and the friendly ones like raising the salaries, like, uh, showing, like uh, taking decision to uh, show respect to the judiciary, the army, etc. Then the tenth one was a surprise for everybody, which is calling the parliament to convene once again. Mm -hmm. This was a complete surprise mm -hmm. and the strange thing that it was taken after meeting deputy secretary of state William Burns I mean the American deputy secretary of state everybody took it for granted that he had discussed this with the Americans and they definitely discussed it with the military mm -hmm. then we discovered later that there has there has been no negotiations mm -hmm. or agreements at least with the scuff mm -hmm. And we found out that this went in opposition and in direct opposition with the uh, uh, Constitutional Court. Now the President has taken the right step to go back on his word, on his decree, and because we were heading for a great political crisis. That's good. 
hopefully next time you will learn the lesson because it is but do you think that this is the end of it the, the, the no, no 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 political no. disputes in the future d d definitely no because we have obviously contradictory interests mm -hmm. the scarf has his own interests and his his own views mm -hmm. in the way uh, they want to run the country President Morsi has his own views mm -hmm. and uh, the main bone of contention that he believes is that he has certain powers that they have taken them away mm -hmm. so he he tried in that decision to take back some of his powers and he will try to do this again mm -hmm. and we have a very soon bone of contention which would be the constitutional uh, committee next Tuesday mm -hmm. The, the court is going to decide whether it is valid or not valid and we are going to come we're going to fall into another crisis. And if it's not so, we're going to form another committee uh, or another uh, assembly uh, for the Constitution? As far as I understand that, the, um, according to the uh, complementary constitutional amendment, mm -hmm. the, the SCAF had the right to form uh, a committee on their own. Mm -hmm. So if this happens, it means another crisis because they insist, President Morsi has his own view, that he wants the same. This. The current constitution. The current assembly is to continue. Yes. So President Morsi departed yesterday to Saudi Arabia on his first external official visit. So, what's the emphasis of this visit? Uh, the emphasis is very clear. He wants. He, he, well, he believes that Saudi Arabia is extremely important to country in our foreign policy and our internal policy, mm -hmm. and it is not a secret anymore that Saudi Arabia has been rather hostile to the revolution, mm -hmm. has been rather hostile to the developments in Egypt and they have made it no secret that they were angry that Hosni Mubarak has been badly treated mm -hmm. they were not uh, it has not been secret that uh, they were worried that Muslim Brotherhood uh, and a, a Muslim Brotherhood president has become uh, I mean a Muslim Brotherhood uh, leader has become the president so they have a lot to worry about mm -hmm. and I remember that, uh, that probably uh, a couple of weeks or three weeks I interviewed an important uh, American writer, he is David Ignatius, mm -hmm. and he said that the Saudis are completely angry with the Americans because they supported, they made, or they helped mm -hmm. a Muslim Brotherhood president, uh, well, to become a reality. I mean, to help the Muslim Brotherhood in their advances, in their political advances. They were angry too that the Americans have not supported the stay of uh, Mubarak and when he was toppled they were still angry mm -hmm. that the Americans did not intervene to stop uh, sending him to a trial. So the Saudis have a lot uh, to worry about here in Egypt. Mm -hmm. This visit may assure them a little bit that the future, that we may have a common future together, mm -hmm. that some of their worries might be true I mean, from their own point of view, but we are both keen to uh, minimize our worries and to try to concentrate on our common interest and to may resume better future without Mubarak and without the uh, ex regime. So, Mr. Said, you've said that uh, most of the Arab countries, including Saudi Arabia, are angry that uh, monarchies. Uh, uh, monarchies, yes, yes. Uh, are more angry because uh, Hosni Mubarak or former president Hosni Mubarak was toppled. But does the fact that president, the current president uh, Mohammed Morsi is in fact related to an Islamic uh, party, uh, which is the Freedom and Justice Party, or in fact the Muslim Brotherhood, does this fact make it easier to to deal with the Saudi with the Saudi Arabians, the the uh, the United Arab Emirates, and the most of the world, uh, Arab world? It makes it harder. Harder. It makes it harder. Yes. Mm -hmm. when, when they were hung, uh, when they were angry because of uh, of the way Hosni Mubarak was toppled, not because for the for their personal relationship with Mubarak. This is mm -hmm. definitely one well, of the reasons. Mm -hmm. But because they are worried about the, the, themselves. Uh, themselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. We may have the same f fate. Mm -hmm. And in this case, if uh, if the Americans have not been loyal enough to their um, to their ally Mubarak they wouldn't be loyal to them later and they would not mm -hmm. support them. That's number one. Number two, yes, it seems that the, the Gulf in general and the Saudi Arabia on top of them, mm -hmm. Qatar, Saudi Arabia, the Emirates, etc., they support the political Islam, but they support a particular kind of uh, political Islam, which mm -hmm. is the Wahhabi one. Mm -hmm. So 
Well, a Muslim Brotherhood does not exactly fit into their model of Islam. Mm -hmm. So, well, they, they consider the ascent of uh, the brothers mm -hmm. as, a, as a threat to them. So, yes, but no, they, they, they are worried. As a threat. As a threat to them, of mm -hmm. course, yes, because their own ideas. Mm -hmm. Historically, there have been ups and downs mm -hmm. in the relationship between the Muslim Brotherhood and the Saudi Arabia in particular, because at the very, very beginning, if we go back to history, the Saudis were the first people to embrace Hassan al-Banna and to give him support in the, in the, in, in the sickest days mm -hmm. when they went into confrontation yes. with Gamal Abdel Nasser, Saudi welcomed them and they were almost in exile until Sadat asked them to come back. Mm -hmm. He asked them, it's a long story, I don't know. <laughs> to, uh, yeah, no, we have time today. Oh, oh really? Yes. So uh, Sadat, when, mm -hmm. w w when they were in exile in Saudi Arabia, they came back because it was one of the conditions of the, of the Americans, mm -hmm. if, if you want our support in restoring Sinai and supporting your economy to recover after your war with Israel, well, fine. There are certain conditions. One of them mm -hmm. is to ask, is to allow the Muslim Brotherhood members to come back again to Egypt. Mm -hmm. And they have their own ideas. They were not quite assured that Sadat will not be another Gamal Abdel Nasser. So mm -hmm. they wanted another rival here in Egypt. Mm -hmm. So there could be a sort of balance. They could mm -hmm. put some pressure on him through the Muslim Brotherhood as a strong opponent. Mm -hmm. The same way the Israel, Israelis and the Americans allowed Hamas mm -hmm. to thrive in Gaza against Fatah. Ag against Fatah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's a smart remark. Yes, mm -hmm. that's true. So as a matter of fact, there are ups and downs in the relationship between Muslim Brotherhood and uh, Saudi Arabia and of course uh, their main ally, the Americans. Now, the relationship is at a low, what's the word in English, at a low tide? Do, 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 do. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, it is not in a very good position because right now, the Saudis want things, the status quo to remain as it is. Mm -hmm. They wanted the Islamic Wahhabi, they would be more comfortable with the Salafists.